we're not really seeing much innovation when it comes to reefs. We're seeing reinventions of the wheel a little bit and just marketed in a different way. Even though we're all seeking that perfect rig, does it actually exist? In this month's vlog, I discuss the subject of rigs and whether we've gone full circle while searching for the ultimate carp rig. But before we do that, let's rewind the clock to warmer times as we join me on the banks of an East Midlands syndicate water. Just to clarify, that is the dog snoring in the background. I've not got Steve Briggs in the bivvy, who is the champion snorer of carp anglers, although he hates me saying that. Um, right, here we are, we're at the Nottinghamshire Syndicate Lake, and this is the first time I've fished it since about early March, I think it was. I don't know why I've not been down here. It is absolutely beautiful. There's nobody here at the minute, which is wonderful, absolutely wonderful. I know it's been busy over the spring months, though. And there is a big common in here that is very close to 50 pounds, a fish known as Stalker. It's been out already this year at 47.12ish, something like that. I can't remember the exact weight, it might be 46ish. Memory it starts to fade as you get older. And for some reason, don't know why I didn't fish it over the spring, probably because I was just busy doing other things and a lot of filming over the spring months, different venues. But did a work party at the weekend came down here and it just looks completely different to obviously when I was here in the winter months. It looks absolutely lovely, everything's green now, it's really matured up nicely and it is a proper gravel pit this place is as well, it's been fished hard over the years. Got a lot of carp in here, not many big ones though, there was a fish near called Scar that was a 40 pound mirror that sadly passed away in the spring and then there's the big one which is Stalker. There's a few 30s, probably a handful of 30s, maybe one or two more than that, I don't really know, but there's a lot of 20 pounders in here, a lot of small sort of torpedo looking fish as well that have probably come in from the River Trent which is nearby and it does flood quite a bit as well during the spring and the winter months as well so you know there's probably a passage of fish between some of the waters that's nearby but it does look lovely and obviously I'm down here to try and catch that that big common it hasn't been out now for about three months I think its last capture was first week in May or second week in May can't remember we're now approaching the first week in August we're actually the 29th of July at the moment so got a couple of days left and then it's August so you know we're well into the summer months now and the lake's been really well fished over the last few weeks as well there's been a lot of guys coming down here catching fish as well but the big one for some reason it's evaded capture so uh, probably been lost it is a, a fish that can be a little bit friendly at times so you know, possibly it's been lost don't know but um, that's why I'm here hoping I'm going to catch it and it does feel good I actually went to my other syndicate water yesterday in Lincoln the one I've done quite a few vlogs on and it felt lifeless if I'm honest especially in these kind of conditions because it's going to get very hot over the next couple of days and I didn't fancy sitting on that lake blanking away the hours because the main two swims on that lake are closed because the fish has started spawning again and you know, I just thought, right, let's get down here. It's, it looked good at the weekend when I came for that, that work party. And I'm getting the vibe that if you do things right, you never know what might happen. So I'm here. I mean, it could be Hilton's, I think it's called. But you've basically got a big weed bed in front. You've got a no fishing bank on the far side. And you've got all these lovely overhangs in front of me with these, these islands. So lots of features these weed beds in front of me they're moving around a lot and when I arrived yesterday the swim next door there was a big chunk of weed in front of there you couldn't get to that far margin behind it and that's where I'm targeting that's the area that the fish love to patrol along there it's a no fishing area and apparently a lot of fish have been getting caught from there over the last few weeks so that's where I've got a couple of my rods and my other rod is just out towards this island here in front of me where it gradually drops off but the far margin it's nice and shallow over there obviously the, the fact there's no fishing over there that's the main attraction and you know there's carp over there and I'm hoping that next couple of days something good might happen so uh, yeah let's see how the, the session develops eh? this one's an absolute cracker 22 pounds Look at those lovely scales on it. Really nice fish this is. It's got a few little wounds on this side because it's probably spawned quite recently, but the side you're looking at is absolutely lovely. Brilliant. First night back on here. And a couple of nice fish this morning.
around. Great way to start the day. Now this fish has got quite a few argus on its flanks, which are like little fleas that will make the fish itch, which is probably one of the reasons why you see a few fish jumping, because they've got a bit of argus on the flank. So before I put this one back, I'm just going to treat it. Now if you're not sure what they are, I'll just show you a quick close-up now. treated this fish then with some medicarp and scraped off a lot of the um, argus that's on its flank so hopefully next time she shows up on the bank those argus should have gone right there we go doesn't want to come out the sling at the minute <laughs> come on you out the sling and I'm looking after you but you're going to be better off out there there she goes a lot cleaner and hopefully in a lot better condition I think that's straight. I'm sure I'll find out in a moment when I look back at it. But you can definitely tell that autumn's on its way because over the last couple of days the temperatures have definitely dropped. I've now got my thermals on. I've got a mug of coffee in my hands as well. I'm trying to warm myself up, but I do love this time of the year being out on the bank. It's really a good time to catch those biggins and to also catch fish that look really nice because you get those lovely autumn colours coming through at this time of the year. But anyway, what I want to talk about now is the topic of rigs because it's fair to say that over the last couple of months we've seen lots of different rig ideas on social media, we've seen lots of people comment on it, lots of hype surrounding a couple of rigs in particular. A lot of hype around both of these rigs, one is the shot and the hook rig and the other one is that rig, you know that rig that's out there that everybody's been talking about. Right, well, um, before I get into my opinions on those rigs, let me just say that one of the best things about having your own YouTube channel is you know who your viewers are because you can go into this thing called YouTube Analytics and you can find out the age group, the demographics of the people that you're talking to and I know that 96% of the people who watch my channel are 35 years and above so you've probably been around carp stream for quite a while you've seen lots of different lakes lots of different waters come across lots of different people seen the industry evolve into what it is today and you know i'm not really attracting many of the younger kids the impressionable ones that's out there the newcomers to the sport so hopefully what i'm about to talk about now if there is one or two youngins out there they might watch it and they might tell their mates to go and watch this channel because you can actually learn a thing or two about watching some of the older guys that's been around the carp fishing industry rather than just the influential guys who are trying to sell your products because it's fair to say that the shot and the hook rig has been around an awful long time it came out in the 1990s i can remember when frank warwick first wrote about it in carp World and it got used an awful lot it caught frank an awful lot of fish I know there's a lot of people out there making money off the back of Frank's ideas such as wafters, you know, who's the guy that first put them out there and you know the shot and the hook rig is definitely not something new. And as for that rig that my old mate Ali's been putting around in recent months, well you've got to take your hat off to Ali because he's been bashed from pillar to post in recent times and he's still standing and that's a measure of the bloke, it really is. He's a proper good guy Ali, he's, I've known him since he first came into the industry, he's a really top lad and he certainly means well and he certainly won't put something out there that he thought was going to damage the carp so some of the flack that he's been getting on social media not really justified some of it is especially to do with that haircut but um, he's a good guy and I know he's going to do well with his company because he's a proper innovative guy he means well and he's a credit to the industry as well but even the rig that he's put out there in recent months it's almost very similar to a lot of the rigs that we used to use in the 1990s when it first came out, I can remember seeing different people talking about Steve Renyard's Hermit Rig and you know the Bungie Rig and also the rig that myself and Rob Hughes used in the 1990s, which we actually wrote about in Strategic Carp Shin. It's very similar to that, a rig that we called the Trigger Rig. Basically involved a little bit of pole elastic and some stiff boom tube where the fish picked up the hook bait and then it triggered the mechanism. You're just looking at a little bit of video now of it when I, I tied it up recently for this video. But it's not really 
that different to what Ali's pointing out there. So, you know, the point I'm getting at here is we're not really seeing much innovation when it comes to reefs. We're seeing reinventions of the wheel a little bit and just marketed in a different way. And that's not knocking Ali's product at all. I wish him well with it. I know it's going to be a big success. So certainly the new one that he's put out there looks a lot better than the first original version. So, you know, good luck to him with that. I'm sure there's going to be a lot more fisheries using it compared to the first one that he put out there. But, um, Certainly if you've been around the industry a long time, it's almost the reinvention of the wheel. You keep seeing the same old ideas, just slightly marketed a little bit differently. And you know, I've been around the industry quite a while now and I've seen a lot of these developments come out again five, six, ten, twelve years later and just marketed under a different name with a slightly different you know, addition to it, like a, a new swivel or a new bit of rubber or something like that. I'm not seeing things that's been as effective as the hair rig when that came out because that really was innovation. It turned those black sessions into multiple fish catches. It's the same with the bent hook rig when that came out as well. That was a very um, new development which definitely gave you an edge. Also the chod rig, you know, something that you can just blast out there and know that it's always going to be fishing for you. You know, I go back to that thing that I've talked about quite a lot when it comes to rigs on a lot of my vlogs, which is the most important thing is to have confidence in what you're doing, have belief in what you're doing. And if you've got that confidence, then you're always going to fish effectively. You know, I've been using the same rig now for God knows how long, and I'm sure it's probably not the best rig that's out there, but I've got an awful lot of confidence in it. I'm sure I'm getting done a lot of the time, but you know, we'll find out when I do one of these underwater videos. I'm due to be doing one next year over in Germany with the guys with Sopography. So even though we're all seeking that perfect rig, does it actually exist? I don't personally think it does. I do think that if you've got the confidence in what you're doing, then that's the edge when it comes to catching carp consistently. Anyway, I'll leave it all there for now and we'll crack on with the fishing. with the lens here because he's chucking it down and I'm just here for the night I've actually just just got here about uh, well an hour ago I've been down in Essex for three days with Avid filming on the top lake at Ashbury Fisheries really nice venue that is but yeah I thought I'd just come here for a night and the conditions are pretty good if I'm honest because there is a pressure drop it is currently a thousand and nine it was a thousand and fifteen yesterday and conditions are really good, really good. Nice southwesterly winds, really warm, drizzly rain, and there are fish showing as well. I've seen about half a dozen fish shows so far, what's up in here? Only Litlands, but the big one is due out of here. He hasn't been caught, or she hasn't been caught, for three or four months now, so an August capture is always on the cards most years, so. You know, it, it, it could happen. Apparently somebody lost it a few weeks ago, so I don't know too much about that though. You know what anglers are like, they always lose the big ones, but apparently the lad who lost it is a lad who's, who's had a few big ones in the past, so, you know, he knows what he's doing. So, um, who knows, but it's due out and conditions are good. And I'm in the, the main swim for it really, which is the point swim, which is, it, it does get caught from here quite a bit. Hasn't been caught from here for about a year now. So you could say it's due a bite. There's not been a great deal of fish getting caught from this area either, for one reason or another. I think it's mostly down to the, um, the weed in other swims. There's quite a lot of weed in other areas which is just holding the fish up. And also it's attracting the anglers as well. So they're going in there and catching a few. But here I am, I'm off tomorrow at 10 o'clock. I've got to go to the garage tomorrow and get myself a new car. So uh, sort that out tomorrow, empty the car and um, sort my gear out and what have you so uh, loads to do but looking good for a bite either this afternoon this evening or maybe during the night you never know fingers crossed
next mirror. And a load of weed. just been out so happy days I said it looked good for a bite and what do you know only 45 minutes after putting the rods out this one's away 21 pounds lovely definitely a chance of another one as well because it's gonna be like this for the rest of uh, the evening and through the night as well so definitely a chance at first light tomorrow morning lovely looking fish as well this one nice scaly one brilliant This is a fish I've seen a few of the other lads with and thought I'd love to catch that one. And there it is, 27 pounds. Just in the middle of breakfast as well. Definitely seems to be the bite time on this place. Between half six and half nine in the morning. Lovely. Through the other side. There's the other side of it. Right old warrior. Plenty of battle marks on it. A few scars, a few missing scales, a little bit of a damaged tail, split dorsal fin. Probably a few years old this one. Lovely. from all those leaves in the margins that autumn's not far away so it's that time of the year when the exo plus comes out and there it is ta-da got to go back a bit here to try and get it all in it's a big old piece of kit it's almost filled the swim here but if you follow me on social media you'll know that i've been using a brolly system over the summer months and the main reason for that is just down to weight more than anything because on some of the lakes that i fish places like long lake down in reading and the linkage pit for some of the swims you need a good old barrel push and every kilo, every ounce matters so the brolly systems are a little bit lighter than the XO Plus but it's come out now because at this time of the year when it gets dark and you've got those really long nights in the bivvy you need a bit of extra space and that's what I've got in here if you can see alright it feels so much better, it really does it's almost like I'm in a TARDIS because some Brolly systems, well the Avid one is, it's quite tight and whilst I like that in the summer months when I'm travelling light, I do like a bit of extra comfort, especially as I get older, so uh, yeah it's lovely to have it out and got all that space in there, not using the ground sheet tonight because it's going to be nice and warm, 
but that's nice and comfortable. Well, obviously there's a two-man version out now, which I showed on my last vlog, but I know a lot of people have been struggling to get the one-man versions because they just sell out all the time. But the good news is they're now back in stock. So if you're interested in getting one, now's the time to get down to your local Avid stockist. And there you go, perfectly modelled by the little bow. <laughs> I'd love to get a bait established on this lake, but I'm not really fishing it consistently enough for it to be of any benefit to me. I think it'd be wasting my time if I started putting any bait out there, because there is a good turnaround of anglers on here, and you know the overnighters that I'm fishing, they're really inconsistent. So you know to put any bait out on a regular basis, I'd need to be coming here at least 48, 72 hours every week, but at the moment I'm just not doing that. So I think it'd be wasting my time. So instead what I'm doing is I'm favoring small traps like stringers, bags and little pockets of bait from the bait boat and this has been a great tactic for me at this time of the year especially during overnighters and you know they're the ones that I'm mostly fishing at the moment just those overnight sessions I've done the odd 48 hour session I think I did do a 72 hour session in in August as well all I'm using is just a braided rig with a liner liner as always and a kicker and roughly eight inches of hook link fishing this alongside a DNA wafter alternating between bug s7 and slk weed. No, maybe not as big as I first thought. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
she goes. That'll do. That'll definitely do. That's all right. Got an half decent one from this lake. What a lovely fish that is. But that's got a few tails, it can tell. What a fish. And what a fight as well. Nearly got to the back of the snags. Then it went, went round to the left. Put up a really good scrap. It was a lot bigger than when it got it in the net over 30 pounds. Got some lovely colours to it as well. Nice and dark. 